Hey guys, this is Justin back with an engineer's perspective and today I'm going to be doing a video that's a little bit uh, different than my norm but we're going to be giving my engineer's perspective on cookware materials, specifically fry pans. So here in front of you I've got uh, eight, three 8 inch pans here. This is a Lodge cast iron. This is a Cuisinart tri-ply stainless steel, meaning it's got a layer of uh, 1810 stainless on the bottom. In the middle a core, there is aluminum. And then on the top, 1810 stainless again. And then this is uh, another um, Cuisinart pan. This is an eight inch Teflon aluminum pan, and it's fully anodized, which is why it looks black instead of the aluminum color. Uh, one material, or not material, but pan, that's not represented here is a carbon steel pan. But just up front, what is carbon steel? Carbon steel is has the exact same properties of cast iron in every way. It's just in a different form factor. And that contributes to things that we'll talk about, that it's in that different form factor. It's just instead of being cast iron, it's rolled out of a sheet and then you know, smushed down using some sort of press. Um, so I've kind of got a summary sheet with my lack of editing skills of all of these materials. So cast iron, CS is for carbon steel, SS is for stainless steel, and aluminum. So um, what kind of properties will affect what these pans do? Well, let's try, try to establish what they do, right? The, the goal. So the goal of these pans is a few things, is that when you're cooking food, you want it to cook evenly. So how even does it distribute the heat on the pan? The second thing is browning. How well does it brown the food itself? Um, and uh, browning is a function of heat. So an important aspect to that is if you, let's say you preheat your pan and then you toss in your, a big steak, if that steak sucks all the energy out of it and your pan goes cold, you don't get very good browning. So, or if you throw in a bunch of chicken bits, zucchini, or you throw in that onion and it lets out the water, sucks all the heat out and you're gonna have a hard time getting that initial good sear on it. Um, not that you would look for a sear on onions, but anyways. And then thirdly is fond development. So fond is that brown stuff that gets stuck in the bottom of the pan. Um, and that's where a lot of flavor comes from, especially if you recover that in like a pan sauce or in a stew or something. So those are the kind of three major things that we look for is evenness, um, browning, and fond development. So I've uh, taken the liberty of taking the engineering um, material properties that contribute to those things. So the first we're gonna talk about here is thermal conductivity. Um, I've got some average values. So the thermal conductivity for cast iron is 52. Carbon steel is 54, essentially the same. Stainless steel, a very low 16.5, and aluminum, an incredibly high 237. So what does that mean, that thermal conductivity? So let's start with the cast iron. Cast iron has a thermal conductivity of about 50. And what that means is that it doesn't very readily distribute heat evenly across the surface. So if you're preheating this pan, you're gonna have to give it an extra moment to preheat because it might be very hot on the exterior, but it won't be hot on the, in the middle or vice versa, something of that variety. So because it has a relatively low thermal conductivity, it takes longer to get even, but it has advantages that kind of cancel that out later on that we'll discuss with it. Stainless steel, thermal conductivity of 16. It is awful, God awful. And that's why it is absolutely key that if you're gonna cook with stainless, is it has to be clad. And clad is that tri-ply I was talking about, where it has an aluminum core, which we saw has a very high thermal conductivity. So what you get with a stainless pan like this is you get the robustness and ease of care of stainless, but you get the even heating of uh, aluminum. So once that heat makes it to that aluminum core, it spreads it out evenly throughout the whole pan. So the tri-ply really takes care of that 
awfully low thermal conductivity of stainless, so you still get a very even heating pan. And then your pure aluminum pan obviously has great thermal conductivity, very even uh, heating. Um, on to the next, and I think more, not more important one here, but a very key one is your heat capacity. And basically what heat capacity is, is how much energy each of these can hold, the materials themselves. Um, and what it, what it says is it takes a lot of energy to heat um, these materials up. With cast iron, it has a heat capacity of uh, 0.46, carbon steel of 0.49, stainless steel of 0.50. So they're all almost identical. Aluminum actually has a very high heat capacity of 91. So that means it, all, it takes almost double the amount of energy to actually heat up aluminum. On the flip side of that, that means that aluminum can hold double the amount of energy, and that's important as well. But here's the trick, kind of the play, is that that is based on the mass of each of these. So everybody knows that cast iron is very heavy, it's very dense, and that aluminum is the opposite, it's very light. And because aluminum is very light and not dense, now, even though the pan is the same size as the stainless and cast iron, it weighs a lot less. And that means that it can hold less energy because it has less mass to hold it in. So let's take a look at that. So I weighed each of these uh, eight inch skillets. They are all of decent quality. Everybody knows Lodge. This Cuisinart isn't the best stainless, but it's on, on par, I've compared its weight to like the all clad uh, 3D tri-ply, it's very close in weight. And then uh, this Cuisinart is a definitely a nicer uh, non-stick pan. It's probably three times at least the thickness of like the cheap ones you see at Target. Um, so it is a nice aluminum, heavy aluminum pan for what it is. And here I've got the weights. I did it in communist units, so forgive that, but the Cast iron is 1.6 kilograms. Carbon steel, I averaged the Meissen 8-inch carbon steel and the Maiden 8-inch carbon steel is about one kilogram. Stainless is about 883 kilograms and the aluminum is 690 kilograms. So what we see from that is that this cast iron is twice the weight as this aluminum pan. That means it's got twice the amount of stuff to hold on to that energy. Whereas the stainless is only slightly heavier than this aluminum pan. Um, so then what does that lead to? Is now, because we know the heat capacity, which is how much energy can it hold, and now we know how much stuff is there to hold the energy, we can actually estimate how much energy each of these pans can hold in them. And this is the next important one. So the energy for cast iron, it can hold a whopping 91 kilojoules of energy. Um, the carbon steel, because it's much lighter, there's less material there, can only hold or still hold 61 kilojoules. The stainless steel with the aluminum core, and I had to estimate how much aluminum was in there, uh, was 67 kilojoules. And the aluminum can actually hold a 78 kilojoules, which really surprised me. This is why I wanted to do this kind of engineering look at this, is my knee-jerk reaction. Before I looked at any of this stuff, as I just said, aluminum is, it's too light. It doesn't hold enough heat. But that's not actually true. It is, uh, yes, it is light. But when you've got a quality aluminum pan like this, that is a very thick all around, because its heat capacity is so high, it's twice that of either of these, even though it's lightweight, it can actually still hold on to a lot of energy. So this pan holds on to more energy than this stainless pan, meaning that when you put that steak in there, it's not gonna cool down as much as this stainless. And not only that, because it's 100% aluminum, it'll conduct the heat better 
to replace that heat. Um, uh, to, to keep it even rather, but it does have the downside is it takes more work from your stovetop to heat the pan back up, but that's not too much of an issue as long as it's got that kind of stockpile of energy to start with because once the pan gets hot, it's not so much heating up the pan that your stove does as the stove just kind of you know, transfers it through the pan to the food, if that kind of makes sense. So you've kind of got to, you fill up your bucket and even though you're taking a lot of energy or water out of the bucket, you've got more constantly flowing in. So it's not as big of a deal as long as it's kind of got that initial volume of the bucket of energy. The stainless one, um, has 67 kilojoules, which is quite a bit less than either of these two options, which really surprised me because I love cooking in stainless. Um, it has one advantage though, and that's what we're gonna move on to with the carbon steel though, or kind of juxtaposed to the carbon steel, is that the amount of energy it holds isn't awful at 67, but because it is faster to heat up uh, than the aluminum, it can recover that heat a little bit quicker. And as I, I kind of explained that dynamic, but what that equates to is it's a little bit more responsive, as we say. So when we turn off the heat, the pan stops cooking the food. When we turn the heat back on, it heats right back up and starts cooking the food again. And that's because it's not holding on to quite as much energy as say this aluminum and certainly not the cast iron pan. So you can kind of gauge what you want based on that. And the cast iron is kind of the extreme of those things. Um, and uh, because it's so heavy, it's very thick the way they cast it and uh, it makes it very, very heavy. And what that results in is having by a lot the most uh, energy that it holds at 91 kilojoules. And that means once you get this baby hot, it's gonna take a while to get it totally even. But once you do, when you put ingredients in this baby, it is golden. It's not gonna cool it down and you're gonna get the best browning out of any of these pans right here in this cast iron because it just holds so much energy. But as I was talking about the stainless, there's a flip side to that is that with the cast iron, when you turn off the heat, it's gonna keep cooking because there's so much energy left over in the pan that it's just gonna keep going. So if you need that responsiveness, then you're either gonna have to take the food out of that cast iron or just be aware of your temperature or cook things that aren't um, as liable to overcook if you have to leave it in the pan. Okay. So let's kind of summarize that and then relate it back to the objectives. So the aluminum pan is very conductive, meaning it's very even. Um, and uh, because it has a high heat capacity, despite its light weight, it can hold on to a lot of energy and doesn't cool down. The tri-ply stainless doesn't have very good thermal conductivity on its own, but that aluminum core makes up for it. So it still heats very evenly. Um, it doesn't have the highest uh, energy content like the aluminum or cast iron, but it has enough where it can still do good browning in it. And it can recover that heat quickly because it's very responsive, where if you turn up the heat, it gets hotter, turn it down, it gets lower. Last is the cast iron, the least even heating by, of them all, but it uh, has the most energy by a long shot of them all as well. So it takes a long time to heat up and get even heat, but once you do, it holds on to it solid and it'll carry that heat whether you turn the stove off or not, so be aware of that. All right, so kind of those three things we we're looking for in the beginning. Uh, first was, does it heat evenly? So I kind of covered that. These two heat very evenly, very quick, and are the most responsive, second most responsive to heat changes. Cast iron does not heat evenly right away, takes a long time to preheat, and it does not respond to heat changes. So the second is the browning power. It is uh, most people say that stainless browns better than aluminum, uh, and that's just not the case by the numbers, and certainly not from what I see. 
but that's where we'll get on to the next part is the, the aluminum is a better at browning than the stainless because it has that higher energy total in there. Or, but you know, compare that to the cast iron. The cast iron blows away both of these if you're looking for that sweet crust on your steak. And lastly is fond development. And that is where the non-stick aluminum pan just falls flat on its face. The fond development really needs something to stick to a little bit. Not that it's very aggressive, but it needs a surface. And uh, the non-stick on here just doesn't do that. You do not get very good fond development in uh, the Teflon pan. The stainless is my favorite for developing fond. That light color surface makes it very easy to see the color of your fond and how much is in there. It's great because it sticks and once the food gets hot, it releases easy and it leaves that nice flavorful fond in the bottom. Cast iron is very similar to the stainless and that does a great job developing that fond in there. The issue is that because the pan is black, it is next to impossible to tell exactly what's going on with your fond in this pan, but it'll still develop it. It's just a lot harder to control it because you can't see it. So with those uh, three tenants in mind, you can make your choice as to what you're looking for. But um, for me, stainless is almost always my preferred option, even though it almost theoretically has the worst of both worlds in a way. But you know, maybe the best of both worlds at the same time. It's light and handy. It will brown, it'll do fond. You know, it's not the best at browning, but it does a really good job. Um, so I like stainless the best. But if you're talking light and flaky fish and eggs, these go in here. If you're talking steak or anything that I've generally put in the oven, cast iron. So that's kind of my uh, engineer's perspective on uh, cookware materials. Uh, cat or carbon steel, I forgot to come back around to that. It's basically like stainless. It's, it's pretty much acts like a clad stainless pan. So a, a regular carbon steel pan is as good as a clad stainless pan. It's just that um, it has some of the downfalls of not being able to see the fond as well and things like that and require seasoning, etc. But that's where it falls is very similar to a nice quality stainless pan. So that's all I've got. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.